Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Really appreciate it. Um, and I want to thank, before we get started, Bridget um, from the Archdiocese of Arlington and Mr. and Mrs. Moy in particular, who asked me to do this. Um, by the way, we went to the restaurant to pick up food, so, you know, Bridget and I, because we had to be here early to make sure everything was set up. And I go to the restaurant and I go, Hi, you know, I just want you to know, how's it referred to you by Joe Moy? Hey. And they go, give me a price, right? And they said, like, 40, 40 some odd dollars. Like, I let you know, I, I try to use Joe's name to get a discount. <laughs> and it didn't work. <laughs> they, they went charge me more. <laughs> so, so, Joe, we, we can, we'll keep on working on that. So. But um, I think this was an important discussion to talk about first generation and second generation. Um, and so, but I want to thank you three very much in particular. My objective tonight is very uh, standard that I just want to have the first and second generation Asian American parents and students will support each other uh, in the Catholic faith. And by the way, Caitlin started working, my daughter, as you can see here, she started working on this video for me, and she put that in there. And, uh, uh, I want you to know that it's not just parents teaching kids. It's now, I've learned so much from this young little girl, uh, who now is 20 years old. Uh, she has taught me so much about my Catholic faith. So it goes both ways, and that's what I'm really trying to, um, you know, uh, to, to emphasize too, that it, it's both sides can be helped. Both sides can really support each other. And so that's our goal for today. Uh, a little bit about myself, for those of you guys who don't know, and. So this might be uh, one or two of you in the, in the room, but I was born and raised in upstate New York. I'm the youngest of six children, so I have five uh, siblings, and I was an ABC, an American-born Chinese, all the way. Um, and then uh, I was youth group leader for 15 years. Uh, it was a wonderful experience, uh, but we also saw a need in our church for the married couples group. So what we did, we started the married couples group, and we let the older kids become the youth group leaders. Uh, so as a result, um, I have just this extensive experience working with kids. Um, and I think in our bio, but I work with about 2,000 uh, uh, Asian kids over the past 28 years. Uh, so it's been, a, it's been a unique and wonderful experience. Um, but I just want to stress, too, that I'm a 1.5-er now. I'm not, I used to say to adults, and, and when I did talks, I said, hey, just take a good look at me, because I'm an older version of your children. <laughs> <laughs> right, take a good look at me, and now I can't say that because now I'm older. I'm like a parent, so I'm a, I have a parent too, and I'm two kids, so I'm a 1.5er. So I have both the parent perspective and the uh, children's perspective. Um, so that's something that I wanted to stress in terms of my background. Uh, to prepare for this talk, because I was out of the game a little bit, I uh, interviewed several parents and students using qualitative data, really just hearing their heart. I really wanted to hear what their hearts were, uh, and um, I wanted to really see uh, what their input was. And what I learned is, as, as I took down the data and dissected it, it was very clear that there, what we could see what parents can learn, what we could see what students can learn, and what can they learn together. Um, but my ultimate goal, again, is that they are closer to one another and to Christ. Uh, their family bond there is so huge uh, that they will develop their their uh, uh, Catholic faith. So, what can parents do? And again, uh, this is a talk that, uh, a picture that also Ling Ling picked too. Um, as you can see, she put herself front and center. <laughs> um, and I'm in the back. <laughs> and yeah, Timothy's, what is he doing? Huh? He, he's going to be a little mischievous there, a little bit, but, but what can he do? I mean, what can parents do? And the one thing that I want to stress over and over again is that they can love each other. Huge! Huge. And I've seen this more and more as I'm back into the counseling realm, what are the number one worries that a kid has is hands down is that their greatest worry of our children often is that as parents leave each other rather than love each other. So if they can love each other, that is a huge burden that is taken away from the kids. So if they can love each other, really care for one another, that is huge. And we need to send that over and over again. Um, by the way, when I showed this picture to Timothy, um, he goes, eh. You know, whenever I kiss Joshua, she's like, eh, stop that. But at the same time, too, quite honestly, whenever we have a fight, he looks up and he's like, oh. he, he pauses, he gets nervous. 
And so he knows that family is a good thing. He knows the closest of family is important. And so he, he cherishes that. So he jokes around when, when I show affection to Joshua, but the point is he really values it. Um, and the other thing, too, is uh, the kids are observing other parents. Very, I can't tell you how many parents said to me, um, I mean, how many kids have said to me, you know, they don't act like my uncle and aunt who get along. They don't, they talk much more than my parents do. So they're really, really watching that. So we really have to make sure that they are uh, safe and secure in knowing that uh, we love each other and that's important in our, our Catholic faith. Secondly, really, really listen. Really, really listen. So, so listening doesn't mean talk, talk, talk. Uh, this is many years ago, Timothy's a little kid. Look, at he's already yeah. holding my mouth and keeping it quiet. So, so, so um, and then, oh, I'm sorry. Throughout this whole talk, the quotes you hear are from kids. A lot of, most majority of my quotes are from kids. There are very few quotes that I have from parents, uh, but, but the, the quotes from the kids. And one can say, why should I tell my parents anything when they tell the whole world? So why did they tell the Chinese CIA or the Korean KGB or the Filipino Police Academy or the Indian um, uh, Intelligence Agency? They tell everything. So the kids are like, oh, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything to my, uh, to my mom and dad. They have loose lips. Loose lips sink ships. So I'm not going to tell them anything. No way. So. Other times, some, more often better not, is to listen, really, really listen, because they hate it also, so that they don't, not only hate when, they, when parents have loose lips, but they also hate it when parents, uh, they don't think they're listening. It's not worth their time. So if you could just listen, 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 not only love each other, but listen, listen, rather than talk. Um, and you're, they're looking for the aha moment, the aha moment where my parents Understand me. Then they're more willing to share. And if you have tight shit lips, we don't share the whole thing to the whole Chinese community or the whole Korean community, the Filipino community, then they're willing to share more. So I had this one parent said to me, my kid is not communicating to me. I said, what do you mean? He comes home, he opens up the pantry, he gets food, he gets a drink, he goes home, and he slams the door. He doesn't say anything. And I go, oh, he's communicating to you. <laughs> he's communicating a lot. <laughs> so you have to understand that that's, there's a message he or she is saying. So you have to build a trust. You have to learn how to talk. You have to, as well as listen. But make sure you have those ah-ha-ha moments where they feel safe and they feel like they can communicate with you. Also, um, communication, so to share your intentions and watch your tone. Watch your tone. Uh, this, this one person said, parents can be brutally honest, too brutally honest, and too publicly brutally honest, <laughs> right? If they have, you know, some issues with how they look, they might talk right in front of their friends, totally embarrassing them. So instead of just saying, you know, hey, watch your tone, watch your attention, watch your audience, also, do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> right? <laughs> I heard this over and over again from my father. Hey, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Well, hi, 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 what's the kid going to do? He's going to be confused. This is a Vietnamese quote from a Vietnamese young gentleman here uh, who said to me that his father and mother is a Vietnamese saying, this is adult business. Now, you actually should not open your mouths. Well, if they're not going to open their mouths, why do they want to talk to you? So you have to be careful what kind of messages, we all have to be careful what kind of messages we're sharing because they might shut down. And then, can you share with your children, I want to be what God's calling you to be. So when you get upset, and when I get upset, I really try to say over and over again to my children, this is my intent, why I got upset. Rather than just saying, I'm angry, you did the blah, blah, why'd you do that? What were you thinking? What were you telling yourself? Instead of that, saying, hey, my intent, and I try to keep my tone like this soft, and usually Timothy lying down on his bed, or Ling Ling sitting in a chair, and I'm seeing them eye to eye to them. Nothing in front of me, nothing to hide from, but sharing my heart, my intent. And so I say to them, this is my intent. This is why Daddy got upset. And then I'll say, do you understand? Do you understand? And I always say something else to you. You can get upset if it's a safety issue. Safety issue is huge. You can do, if there's a safety issue, get upset. 
so they could get hurt. But at the same time, too, you share their intent and why you may yell it, but, but, but share with them the intent of your heart. You bring your heart forward, they'll accept it. And that's what I've seen over and over again, working with kids throughout the years. You know, when I was a principal and I could suspend a kid, I go, do you understand why I'm disciplining you? Do you understand? This is, I, listen, we don't enjoy it, but my intent is if I ignore this, you could get hurt yourself or someone else could get hurt. Usually I always suspended a kid if, as a principal if they could hurt somebody. And so I would tell them that, and they would apologize. They would get it, or they would apologize to another assistant principal. So you have to show your intent. Okay. Then, also, rules without relationship lead to rebellion. This is a famous uh, counseling therapist named James Dobson. He, he established Focus on the Family in, in the Protestant community. He's very good. Um, now he's much older now, but his rule is rules without relationship lead to rebellion. The rules without relationship lead to rebellion. You, you can't establish rules if you don't have a relationship. So you have to have the relationship piece first. Then you can have the rules. And I, I took some stories that I share about this. You know, the Chinese community so often, uh, you know, Joshua noticed this too when I was a youth leader. I'd stand at their church, and I'd be sitting there at the church and standing at the church. And the parents, the moms would come up to me, and they're always hitting me. And they're always going, hey, oh yeah, what'd you do for my children lately? You know, hey, oh yeah, what, what about this, what about that? And every single month, I kid you not, in the Asian community, a parent will come to me and say, hey, my kid's doing this. My kid's doing that. You, you fix him. <laughs> you, you, you fix him. You, you help him out. You tell him. Tell him. Tell him, oh young. You tell him what to do. And I'm like, he's not a car park. <laughs> he, he doesn't need an oil change. He doesn't have a flat tire. <laughs> you you got to have the relationship piece first. So I would tell parents over again, I can talk to them but I'm not their parent. And they want to hear from the parent. They might be sending you a message as a parent, but you can't change their oil or a car part. You have to talk to them and build a relationship. So this piece, the relationship piece, is huge. The other thing, too, is um, relationship piece with grades. And I, I thought this would bring up much discussion in this group, but you know, the, the Asian way, a lot of kids say this, is if a kid gets a 97% on a test, Right? The American way is, oh, you did so good. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. But the Asian way is, oh, where's the three points? <laughs> what, what? You got three points wrong. What are you thinking? What did you do so well? What's wrong with you? And, and that's dangerous because a kid is fighting like mad to do well. And it's like, I can't please my parents. Mm -hmm. So the relationship piece, instead of looking at it more in a positive light, so this happened once with the family in the, in the Chinese community. And so it just so happened the following week, there was a celebration. I think it was a New Year's celebration like that. So I found out, this mother said to me, you, we, we have that right, that's the Asian way. That's the Asian, we, we can do that, that's the Asian way. I said, oh, okay, 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 okay. So I let it go. Then the following week, she made a, a bowl of dumplings. So I grabbed the bowl of dumplings, I brought it to her and I said, you know what? 97% of these are really good. <laughs> but these three dumplings, they're not looking good at all. <laughs> right? And this mother looked at me like, hmm. And you could tell I would never get one of her dumplings again. <laughs> right? But that's okay. But the point is this. And that is, you have to build relationship peace first. You have to build relationship. Relationship peace is huge. You build the relationship peace, then they're willing to talk to you. But it's always constantly yelling, it's always constantly disciplining. There's no relationship building. It's demanding, it's, 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 it's feeling that a negative tone, rather than, hey, let's just go out. Um, real quickly, when, Ling, when Timothy was born, my son, I had Ling Ling to myself, Joshua was in the hospital, and I go, Ling Ling, let's, let's go, let's go to mommy, daddy, I mean, uh, daddy, daughter, uh, dinner time. She's like, yeah. Where do you want to go? She goes, Popeye's chicken. <laughs> right? So we go to Popeye's chicken, we order a dish, and he sit there and go, you know, I'm a little worried, Ling Ling, you know, uh, daddy's got to take care of mommy now, and this little brother of yours. Well, you know, what do you think I could do? And Ling Ling goes, Daddy, I'm loving this time. 
And you know what else? I, I get to spend time with you. And, and you know, I'm going to take care of Timmy. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, she was a great big sister. She talked, but that was that bonding relationship piece that generated that responsibility. And that was huge for her growing up. So we, want, we don't want a little kid like this looking at you like, what are you talking about? We want to have aha, aha moments again where we're seeing this is where my family is important, it's needed, and how we want to spend good quality time together. Um, last, but not least for this, one for the parent piece is, are you Asian Catholic or are you Catholic Asian? What's more important, being Asian or being Catholic? You know, so these are quotes. They care more about us learning our native language than learning our Catholic faith. But like Korean school is more important than, than CCD. Or Chinese school is more important than uh, Chinese culture and yo-yo class is more important than, than what we learn at CCD. The kids pick this up. So I, my parents never asked me what I learned. They just asked me what grades I got. <laughs> that, was a, <clears throat> that was a multiple resounding theme from many kids. They said, you know, they don't care what I learned. They just care what grades I got. Grades, 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 grades. What about faith, 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 faith? Thirdly, they care more about grades than learning about Jesus. Same thing. And then this one too, which is much for the older kids. Why do I have to marry an Asian? Well, really, they don't say Asian. You know what? You know, for a Korean kid, say, why do I have to marry a Korean? Uh, this Vietnamese kid. Why do I have to be Vietnamese? What other kid, Filipino? Why does it have to be Filipino with the ability to speak Tagalog? Mm -hmm. As Chris said. You know, the language piece is also there. But they never say, how about marrying a Catholic? You know? And that's huge. That's huge. If they're going to practice their faith, they want their faith person there with them. You know, when, when Joshua met me, you know, we both prayed at one time, Dear Lord, break up this relationship. Because we didn't know whether we could serve the church together. And when I saw her work with the youth group, and all these kids started flocking to the youth group because she was there, and the church loved her, I was like, whoa, this is the one that's for me. So the faith isn't more important. So in summary, I just want to share for the parent piece, love each other. Make sure you love each other. It's so important. Listen, communicate, and really, really try to listen. Oh, by the way, when my son's talking, in particular, I try to count in my mouth 30 seconds not to say a thing. Now, I break it 9 out of 10 times, <laughs> but I get to like 25 seconds. I try to really not talk. Also, build relationships, build a relationship, and be a Catholic first. You know, if they're going to find Jesus, they're going to find it most in their home. Make sure that's your most important thing, rather than being Asian. So at this point, we're supposed to take a little short break and just communicate with each other. Is there anything that you want to add that I might be missing? Because, hey, I'm learning this whole part, too. But is there anything add that we want to add before we go on to what students can learn? Sure. We're good.